Poverty, society and the state will consider both the continuities and changes in the social reaction to poverty. It will look at public policy, comparing and contrasting the relief policies of the 19th century with the rise of a welfare approach in the 20th. It would look at how fears and concerns over the possible impact of the pauper, the undeserving or the scrounger have periodically created a sense of panic. It will consider how concerns over the cost of welfare, or the poor laws or the welfare state have been the cause of taxpayer concern since the early 19th century. It will suggest how compassion and concern over society's hapless victims has been the source of charitable outpourings and it will look at how growing understanding of the problems have given rise to greater state action. Firstly, the module will cover the realities of Victorian poor relief, setting it in its appropriate context. The period has been referred to as a gilded age in American historiography, whilst in Britain the Victorian age is regarded as what Benjamin Disraeli called a time of two nations. This represents the chasm between wealth and poverty. The module will initially explore the historic approaches to poor relief and how the poor were viewed at the time. It will explore labels such as residuum, and rumpant proletariat, and how the people in those groups were perceived by the wider society. It will then explore the pressure for change in the conditions of the poor, and the requirement to reform the poor law in 1834, which was intended to limit the spiralling costs of poor relief, which had been out of control since the beginning of the 19th century. This new poor law was based on the findings of an 1832 Royal Commission, and was passed by bipartisan agreement in Parliament. The impact of poor relief played a part in the creation of the Hungry Forties and the impact of vast Irish immigration due to the pay potato famine will also be explored. The new forelaw emphasised self-help and the influence of a broad intellectual tradition reaching back beyond the poor law provided it with deep philosophical basis. We will explore the tradition reaching through thinkers like Malthus, Hobbes, David Ricardo and Adam Smith. These viewpoints on the provision of the poor law also are resident in campaigning groups such as the Charity Organisation Society and a number of other bodies. And issues were based on the predominance of the self-help mentality, famously exuded by Samuel Smiles. Questions will also be raised more generally on how charity dealt with issues of poverty and how entrenched the stigma towards the poor actually was. We'll also look at the improvements focused by the state and by local authorities um, on improving sanitation in the nation's cities and early attempts to improve the quality of the slums. We'll explore to the extent to which altruism was a driving force of this or whether other factors were at play. The rediscovery of poverty by Booth and Roundtree, as amongst many others, is a key moment in the slow transition from the notion of poor relief to that of welfare. The political development of new liberalism and socialism in the late 19th and early 20th centuries as viable political organisations had a significant impact on the willingness to address the problems of poverty and to address them in ways where the state has a responsible role for the care of its citizens. It will analyse the change in the emphasis of liberalism from the classical to the new liberal. It will focus on the Campbell, Bannerman and Asquith ministries reforms and how far this went into removing the stigma of poverty. It will address the creation of national insurance and the state pension, which allowed the Liberals to address, along with other issues related to children, a number of serious long-term social problems. We'll look in great depth at the importance of the 1905-1909 to Royal Commission on the Poor Law, and we'll look at the debates between the supporting majority report and the more radical minority report, which was largely written by Beatrice and Sidney Webb. The influence of this new thinking by groups such as the Fabians and even the nascent Labour Party are also looked at in depth. We'll then look at issues such as interwar slum clearance, begun by Lloyd George's Home Fit for Heroes campaign in the early 1920s. We'll also explore work done by local authorities to improve housing stock and question how successful and widespread this was. A major social and economic issue will be the impact of the Great Depression the accompanying unemployment will be discussed in depth, along with a success of local and central government in dealing with it. The relationship between unemployment and poverty will be discussed and placed in the context of this devastating economic situation. It will then be placed in its period as a precursor to the welfare state. The course will go on to explore the impact of William Beveridge's 1942 report on social insurance and allied services. The report's findings, its ambition to conquer the five ills of squalor, ignorance, want, idleness and disease 
will be analysed as an attempt by the state to solve the major problems of inequality. It will explore the success of the Attlee administration in putting into action and trying to create a better society through the creation of the National Health Service, the final abolition of the workhouse and improving a number of broader aspects of social security. Throughout the 1950s there was great talk of affluence and this seems to dominate perceptions of the period. Many however were not in agreement and it's this disagreement that led to Abel Smith and Townsend's rediscovery of poverty in the early 1960s that changed the parameters of the great debate. The focus on relative poverty showed that more government action was required and was a partial reason why the government under Harold Wilson launched a number of initiatives in the late 1960s. The module will then, in this final section, focus on the attempts the Wilson, Heath and Callahan administrations made in attempting to tackle poverty, including the successes of the community development projects, inner area studies and a number of other policies alongside the work of Peter Shaw's on regeneration in the Department of the Environment in the late 1970s, will evaluate the success and failures of government policy and try to understand the key themes and issues that have shaped the way the state has interacted with poverty over this large and fascinating period.